The topic is the Civil Rights Movement in Tennessee, a narrative history, and the guest is Dr. Bobby Lovett, a professor at Tennessee State University, the author of the Civil Rights Movement in uh, Tennessee. Uh, Dr. Lovett, let's uh, talk about the Civil Rights Movement in uh, Tennessee, but before we do that, let's sort of give our audience some background kind of information relative to what really prompted the uh, so-called civil rights movement okay. uh, nationally and then how it uh, impacted Tennessee in, in right. according to what you have here. Well, one of the ways I start the book off is uh, explaining to the readers that uh, the African American has always had a civil rights movement mm -hmm. since the first ships uh, landed in Jamestown mm -hmm. in 1619, mm -hmm. that African American slaves were trying to uh, um, express their freedom however they could, mm -hmm. including running away, uh, slave rebellions. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I say that the Civil Rights Movement really begins uh, in 1865 with the emancipation of the mm -hmm. slaves. Mm -hmm. And uh, African Americans in Tennessee and other places in the South began what I call the first uh, post-slavery civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. And that movement continued up until about 1881. And it was to do three things, to secure citizenship sure. for the former slaves, of course, to get an amendment so that slavery could never come back, sure. the mm -hmm. 13th Amendment, and to get the right to vote. Mm -hmm. And they accomplished all of those things by 1881. Mm -hmm. And by 1881, the Jim Crow era started to corrode some of those, mm -hmm. uh, uh, those progressive changes. Mm -hmm. And from 1881 until about 1930, the second civil rights movement started. Mm -hmm. And that was basically to try to undo the damage that Jim Crow had done. Good. And so a lot of civil rights organizations would be founded in that period of time. Mm -hmm. The Afro-American League in 1890, mm -hmm. uh, Du Bois' Niagara Movement in 1905, mm -hmm. Uh, the NAACP will be formed in 1909. Mm -hmm. The Urban League will be formed in 1910. The Garvey Movement mm -hmm. in 1920 and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, that movement sort of peters out by the early 30s with the coming of the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. And then in 1935, the civil rights movement that we now talk about mm -hmm really started in 1935-36 when uh, uh, Charles Hamilton Houston, mm -hmm. dean of law school at Howard University, mm -hmm. Harvard Law graduate, mm -hmm. uh, was hired by the NAACP mm -hmm. to come up with some legal strategies about how to attack Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately led to a lot of civil rights uh, cases they won. Mm -hmm. They won 12 or 15 cases in the mm -hmm. United States Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And the big case they filed, they finally won it, and that was Brown versus Board of mm -hmm. Education mm -hmm. in May of 19, 1954. Mm -hmm. And that's what started the real public activity, heightened activity mm -hmm. of the Civil Rights Movement. Mm -hmm. And many people equate that period from mm -hmm. Brown, mm -hmm. 1950s and the 60s, as the Civil, civil rights, rights Movement. Mm -hmm. But that was just a culmination mm -hmm. of a Civil Rights Movement mm -hmm. that African Americans had started in 1865. Mm -hmm. And then, in, in, in the real sense, even even earlier, what you said, when they first came mm -hmm. and got off the boat, that they were there was an interest in freedom and civil rights. That's and right. They, no matter what you call right. it, at that particular time, there That's is right. that very good. The, the slave rebellions mm -hmm. like uh, Denmark Vesey's mm -hmm. rebellion uh, in the 18th century, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Coors and Nat Turner's rebellion, mm -hmm. the Underground Railroad people like Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and Sojourner mm -hmm. Truth and mm -hmm. uh, William Lloyd Garrison. Mm -hmm. We don't uh, really put a label of civil rights leaders on these people, mm -hmm. but they were fighting for the same things mm -hmm. as civil rights leaders were fighting. Mm -hmm. Uh, for in the 1950s and the 1960s. Mm -hmm. And that's human freedom and human equality under the American Constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, the movement in, in the state of Tennessee, and of course, I think we're fortunate in the state of Tennessee, as you know, that uh, we have uh, such a rich history, in a uh -huh. real sense, with the uh, institutions of higher education, American Baptist College, and et cetera. Let's talk about uh, uh, how this book fits into that kind of scheme in terms of... Yes. Uh, uh, well, well of course, the book, after giving all of that background, it really uh, concentrates on the period from the 1950s up until the present time, that is, up until the book was published 2005. Mm -hmm. It covers all of those yeah. particular years. 
and it covers the desegregation, of course, of the schools with Brown versus Board of Education mm -hmm. across Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, talks about uh, desegregation of politics. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, talks about the uh, uh, desegregation of higher education, including mm -hmm. the case a merger of Tennessee State and UT Nashville. Mm -hmm. And so it tries to comprehensively, in a story, a narrative, mm -hmm. cover all those things that were going on uh, between 1955 mm -hmm. and 2005 in the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And most people don't know that Tennessee played an important role mm -hmm. in the regional civil rights movement across the South, mm -hmm. and that the Freedom Riots really had a, a great uh, uh, background in Nashville, yeah. Tennessee. Mm -hmm. The sit-ins that were started here spread throughout the South, and they were used as models throughout the nation as here's how you do it through mm -hmm. nonviolence. Mm -hmm. The movement in Memphis was one of the largest and the most protracted civil rights movements mm -hmm. in the country. Mm -hmm. And the civil rights movement spread across into Chattanooga, mm -hmm. into Knoxville. There were also great civil rights and sit-in leaders mm -hmm. over in those particular states. But Tennessee has not gotten its due in terms of uh, mm -hmm. being a leader mm -hmm. in the civil rights movement because most of the movement here uh, did not result in massive violence mm -hmm. like it did in Alabama, mm -hmm. Little Rock, Arkansas, and mm -hmm. so on. Much of the changes in Tennessee were mm -hmm. painful, but they were mm -hmm. usually nonviolent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very good. And you, and you know, Dr. Lovett, I think we're getting ready for our uh, next uh, commercial break. And uh, what we'd like to do uh, for you to do in during this last segment that's coming up is to uh, think about uh, the information that you believe that uh, we ought to know out of this book. That is, what are some of the things that you uh -huh. found in terms of your study that uh, almost anything that you have, many of us don't know anything about it, you uh -huh. see, but there, but there are some outstanding kinds of things that I'm sure that uh, you would like to talk about, and that's what we want you to do. Uh, doing the uh, uh, final segment, that uh -huh. is to identify for us those things that are in this book that you say that, well, I bet you didn't know uh -huh. that kind of information, right. and, uh -huh. and certainly we certainly would appreciate that. I think we've got about uh, half a minute uh -huh. before we come to an end of this segment, and uh, we don't want to raise any other questions before we do that, but uh, I think that you're giving us essentially what we wanted uh -huh. to have, because as you've indicated earlier, you, we've talked about the uh, African-American, American experience during the Civil War, and et cetera, and et cetera. But we've missed out on this. Uh, uh -huh. that Thurgood, um, I mean, the, uh, Sam, the Houston information, and et cetera. We uh -huh. need that. Uh, right. We need to know that. And of course, uh, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> the topic of the Civil